Hello. Welcome to the video. <clears throat> we are looking at section 3.2, where we're going to look at parallel lines and transversals. So we touched on uh, transversals in 3.1, where we were able to identify the different um, angle relationships with respect to the transversal. Today, we're going to look at um, what happens when you have a transversal with respect to two um, parallel lines. So the question here that they pose is, when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, which are the resulting pairs of angles that are congruent? Well, what it happens to be is we have these theorems that are going to uh, help us determine uh, which angles are congruent. So if you look at this diagram here, we have uh, a series of angles with a transversal. So what we have is um, line P and line Q are parallel because of the arrow marks telling us that. So because of that, we can now look at our corresponding angles. And so because of the corresponding angles theorem, we can now say that all corresponding angles will be congruent. So 2 and 6 would be congruent, 3 and 7, 1 and 5, 4 and 8. All right, so all corresponding angles will be congruent. Also, all alternating interior angles will be congruent. So 3 and 6, 4 and 5. Alternating exterior angles will be congruent, 1 and 8, 2 and 7. And then finally, consecutive angles are going to be supplementary. So their sums will be uh, equal to 180 degrees. 3 and 5 will be supplementary, and 4 and 6 will be supplementary. So here, it says measures of three, it says the measures of three of the numbered angles are 120 degrees. They want you to identify the angles and explain the reason. So I could tell you that angle five will be 120 degrees because of corresponding angles, because we know that these are parallel. I can also tell you that angle 8 will be also 120 degrees because of alternating exterior angles. The last one, the third one, is going to be angle 4. All right? It's not a new um, idea that we've looked at today, but it's something that we looked at in, in prior lessons, and we know that uh, the 120 degrees and angle 4 are both vertical angles. Here, they want us to find the value of x. So what we know here is line A and line B are parallel. So since line A and line B are parallel, we know that um, through those theorems corresponding are congruent, alternating you know, interior, alternating, and exterior angles will be congruent, and uh, consecutive interiors will be supplementary. So, what I can tell you is the relationship between this 115 degrees and the x plus 5 degrees is it's n there's no relationship between um, those two angles. But, I know that angle 4 and 115 degrees will be the same because of vertical angles. So now angle 4 and x plus 5 degrees will be consecutive uh, interior angles, which means they're going to be supplementary. So I can say that x plus 5 plus uh, 115 will result in to be 180 degrees. So, you know, I add up 5 and 115, so I get 120. 180 minus 120 gives me 60, so x is 60. They're asking you to find the value of x. 
angles. That's what we did. If they wanted to know what this angle was, you would just think 60 plus 5, which gives you 65 degrees. So again, here, this one's very similar. You're solving for x. If you have questions on it, uh, please leave a comment. I'm more than happy to uh, work this out if need be. So here we have the diagram to the right. And it says, given that uh, the measurement of angle 1 is 105. So I'm just going to put 105 for right now. They want you to find 4, 5, and 8. And then when they want you to tell you which theorem you use in each case. So I, I can tell you that 4 is going to be 105 degrees because of the vertical angles theorem. I can tell you that 5 is also going to be 105 degrees because of the corresponding angles theorem. And angle 8 is going to be 105 because of the alternating exterior angles theorem. For the second part, it says the measurement of 3 is 68. So I'm just going to put that in there. And they're telling you that the measurement of 8 is 2x plus 4. So what they want to know uh, is the value of x, and then show each step. So between angles 3 and angles 8, there's no angle relationship, whether it's corresponding alternating interior, alternating exterior, or consecutive interior. But we can, um, we can use something else. We can either find what 1 over 4 will be because 1 and 4 with respect to angle 3 is a linear pair. So I can say, well, the first thing I can do is 180 subtracted by 68 is going to get us 112. All right. So pick and choose which one you want. So let's just say we know that angle 4 is going to equal 112 degrees because of 3 and 4 are a linear pair. Well, now that I know that this is 112 degrees, 4 and 8 are corresponding angles. I know that they are parallel, so I can say to find x, I could take 2x plus 4 is equal to 112 degrees. So subtracting 4 from both sides, I got 2x is equal to 108. And then divide it by 2, so x is going to be 54. That's all they want us to find is the value of x. And so here we go. Here it's asking to prove that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of alternating interior angles are also congruent. So. What I'm going to do is, let's look at, on page uh, 132, what we have is uh, a drawing that looks kind of something like this, where you have this transversal, and then you had your two, um, two lines that were parallel. This was P and this was Q. They said that these were parallel in the diagram, and then we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, so I'm going to use that to help us prove that um, alternating interior angles are congruent um, from this diagram. So got my statements, and I got my reasons. So the first thing is tell me what's given to you. Well, they give you that those two lines are parallel. So P is parallel to Q. That is given. All right. Now, what I would do is this, is I'm going to choose a pair of alternating interior angles. So I'm just going to use 4 and 5. You could easily use 3 and 6 for this proof. That's fine. So since I use 4 and 5, what I'm going to do now is choose one of the two angles, and I'm going to look 
at 4. All right, so since P is parallel to Q, I'm going to say that angle 4 is going to be congruent to angle 8. All right, the reason is because of the corresponding angle stair. All right. And in that, uh, s with that same idea, all right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at angle 5, but I also, is there a relationship between angle 5 and angle 8? Well, yes, there is, because angle 5 is congruent to angle 8, and the reason is because of vertical angles. Now, if you notice, I have two separate equations that are that are congruent to angle 8. So now I can say that angle 4 is congruent to angle 5 because of the transitive property. And those two are alternating interior angles, and they are congruent. So I just proved the alternating interior angles theorem. Uh, finally here, <clears throat> it says when sunlight enters a drop of rain, different colors of light leave the drop at different angles. This process uh, makes a rainbow for violet light. The measurement of angle 2 is 40 degrees. What is the measurement of angle 1, and how do you know? So what I know here is I have two parallel lines right here. So what that means is that this line right here is my transversal. It intersects this here, intersects this here. Because it's parallel, what I now know is angle 1 and angle 2 are alternating interior angles. Since this line 1 and this line 2 are parallel, I can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Well, they just told you that angle 2 is 40 degrees. That means that angle 1 is also 40 degrees. So the measurement of angle 1 is going to be 40 degrees. And that is being able to look at parallel lines and transversals. Hope this helps. Until next time.